Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back. Today we're going to be making over this sideboard. I did the hutch top previously in another video. Definitely go check it out if you're interested. When we went to go pick this up, I didn't even realize uh, before we went that the bottom of the drawer was missing. There's some scratches on the top that we'll have to sand out, as well as you can see where the hutch top was sitting for probably years. First to start, we're going to take off all the handles. I did have to grab a little tool to pop out the screws. They were really stuck in there. And by tool, I mean a paintbrush. <laughs> and then we're going to be taking off all of the hinges on the doors. You want to make sure that you're getting all the grime that's underneath of it. I always take the hinges off of all the doors on any project that I do. And just so you don't run into any problems, just label the hinges. So I just put LT as in left top and stuck them on the hinges. Now we're just vacuuming out all of the dust and dirt in the sideboard. And it's super important to clean every single piece that you have, no matter how clean it might look. I'm just using some hot water and Dawn dish soap. And then you just want to get rid of all the residue with some clean water. Once everything was dry, I took some Bondo and the reason I am doing it like this with some tape is because there's just so much to fill that I'm going to do it in two different sections. You can apply Bondo over top of Bondo. And now that the Bondo's dry, we're just going to peel off that tape. And it is really hard, you can see as I try and take the chunk off. And obviously it's not perfect, I knew it wasn't going to be yet. So I'm trying this hack that I've seen on Instagram, just taking some cornstarch. And then I'm going to take some hot glue and put it all over the drawer. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous when doing this. I've never done this before. So you wanna coat it really well, and then when it dries, you can just pry it off. I just used a multi-tool to get underneath there and pried it off with my hands. My original plan was to use Quickwood, but I think it was a bad batch or something from Amazon. It dried so quick and it just would not stick to the drawer. So this is my backup plan with the Bondo and it worked pretty well. Um, I'm just kind of putting a ton of Bondo in that mold and sticking it on there as best as I can. While the Bondo dries, I'm just taking an 80 grit sandpaper to get off that finish on the top. I quickly realized that the finish was so thick, I took my carbine scraper and tried to scrape off as much of the finish as I could and then went back again with the 80 grit. After vacuuming up all the dust, I decided to grab my hot iron with a damp rag to try and swell some of the wood as there was some gouges. So just trying to get the wood to swell so that way I can sand it off and hopefully make it look a little bit nicer. And I'm just taking that 80 grit and uh, sanding it down with my hands. I don't want to ruin the edges with the orbital sander. And then you just want to wipe off all the dust before moving on to the next grit, which is 120. I had a bunch of Bondo left over from trying to fix that drawer, so I just patched up a bunch of spots that I've seen all over the sideboard. And since I had the 120 on my orbital sander, I just used that to be able to smooth out all the spots where I put the Bondo. Once I was done sanding it with the 120, I moved on to 220 to smooth everything out. Thank you. 
Once I was done sanding all of the flat surfaces with my orbital sander, I just took the sandpaper off and hand sanded all of the edges. By the time I was done all of that sanding, my bondo was dry and I'm just prying it off. Now, unfortunately I ran out of hot glue, so that's why I only did half of the drawer. And I didn't wanna go grab more hot glue, so I'm just making it work with the half. Now I'm just using my Dremel tool to be able to sand it off. I'm just doing the top first. I don't wanna go too far on the bottom and end up going past the point where I have to end up adding more bondo. Before I fill any of those little spots that are missing, I'm just measuring the door that's not broken to the door that is broken to make sure that I'm going to have the exact same length on both. Now that I've got my pencil marking, I can see exactly where I need to sand down to. Once I was done sanding everything down to the right size, I'm just rounding out the edges to make sure that it's going to look symmetrical. After all that sanding, I just want to take the shop vac and vacuum up all the dust before I wipe it down with a clean cloth. Since dust gets everywhere, you just want to make sure you're wiping down in all the cracks and crevices as well. Now I'm just using some painter's tape just to make sure I get clean lines. Now that everything's taped up and ready to go, we are on to our primer. I like to use Zinsser's Bin Shellac Base Primer. It is really smelly, so you should be wearing a respirator to protect your lungs. And this is why I use gloves when I'm using this primer. It's really hard to clean off your hands. And I just use a microfiber roller. It makes for easy cleanup as you do need ammonia to clean this type of primer up. So I just toss these away when I'm done using them. And I'm just using a cheap chip brush to get into all the cracks before I use the roller on the doors as well. This primer does dry really quickly, so you wanna work fast. Try not to go over the spot that you just did or you will end up getting some roller texture. There was a huge spot on the back of the door, so I'm just taking some wood filler to be able to patch all those spots up. And the reason I brought the doors inside is because it's quite cold out in the garage right now and this wood filler would take forever to dry. I didn't have to add nearly as much wood filler to the drawer front, so I just used a sanding sponge, but for the doors, I did have to use my orbital sander using a 120 grit. And then to knock down any texture that the roller left with the primer, I'm using the sanding sponge again over the entire piece. After sanding, you always want to wipe your piece down with a damp rag to get rid of any of the dust before painting. I'll be using House and Canvas paint in the color Sandstone. It's kind of off-white, almost undertones of grey. When you're using a roller, you really want to load the paint on very well and then unload it. I always use a brush to get into any of the corners that I can't reach with the roller. You want to make sure that you're doing light coats with the brush and the roller to avoid any drips or excess paint building up in the corners. Your very last stroke of the brush or roller should all go in the same direction to avoid any streaks. I start my drawers upside down, I took the tape off and sanded any primer that bled through, and then I did a total of three coats of paint. The color really looks great, but in this video it's kind of anticlimactic. You're not really seeing the color change as much as you can see it in person, but it looks really great. As always, I put my paint tray with all my painting supplies in a plastic bag until I'm ready for my next coat. 
while I wait for the paint to dry, I'm cleaning up some hardware I had in my stash with Barkeeper's Friend. I didn't like the original hardware, so I'm switching it out with these from another piece that I refinished. I find a green scrub pad works the best and they got them super shiny. I thought you guys might like this kitty cat intermission. This is my handsome boy, Draco. Now that my paint's dried, I'm able to flip the doors over and do the other side. This is what it looks like after the first coat. There was a tiny hair, so I'm just using a super fine pad to get that off. I removed the tape around the top of the sideboard so that way I could make sure that the paint is going all the way to the edge. Here's a side-by-side -side view of the drawers. They're not perfect, but they are a lot better than a huge chunk missing. <laughs> After I finished the three coats on the sideboard, I did a whitewash on the top. I had some leftover country chic paint, so I'm just mixing a bit of that with some water. It's not an exact uh, ratio, I just kind of eyeballed it. I then applied the wash all over the top and then wiped it off with a clean rag. You want to make sure that you're wiping it off all in the same direction of the wood grain to avoid any streaking or uneven color. Before applying my top coat, I inspect the entire piece, and if there's any little hairs, I just use my finger and rub them off. I did let my piece dry overnight before doing my top coat, which I'm using Varathane Diamond Wood Finish in Satin. Make sure that you stir this stuff really well. Don't shake it, or you can get bubbles in your finish. Just like with the paint, you want to make sure you're doing really thin coats. I've got my brush and a country chic sponge that I'm using to apply this. I always dampen my sponge with water so that way it doesn't absorb too much of the top coat. If you like this video so far, please leave me a like and subscribe so you get notified when I post more videos. This top coat will go on milky, but it will dry clear. I don't know if it was because I'm using a light color, but I kept getting little black hairs in my finish, which was driving me crazy. So I had to switch over to a brush, and ultimately I ended up going back to my Country Chic sponge. I just rinsed it out twice, and then even changed my top coat and lined my container with tin foil to avoid any further hairs. I'm just taking a sharp razor blade so that way I can get rid of any of the bleed through that happened with the primer. If I didn't use tape, it would have been far worse. So I know it's a little extra step, but I think it's well worth it. I 
I wasn't planning on using gilding wax on the hinges, but I decided I might as well. I couldn't get them as clean as I wanted, so gilding wax is really great to be able to make them shiny and look brand new. I do always like to put felt pads on the bottom of any piece, especially when you are selling these pieces to somebody else, you don't want it to end up scratching up their floors. I got these off of Amazon and I will put links in the description, so definitely go check them out if you're interested. When I put the left drawer back in, there was just something catching it, making it hard to pull in and out. So I'm just taking a chisel just to get off that little excess wood that was stuck there. And then I'm just taking a 220 grit sandpaper just to sand it down smooth. Another option to make your drawers glide smoothly is by using wax and I'm just using Dixie Belle's Bestang Wax. Just to freshen up the outside and inside of the drawers and cabinet, I'm using Dixie Belle's Big Mama's Butter. And what I thought was the final step was to add these little door stoppers just to prevent any paint on paint contact. I completely forgot that the drawers shook a bit, so I'm just taking some wood and some Gorilla Wood glue and clamping it up just to make it a bit more level so that way they don't shake nearly as bad. This is after I added the little pieces of wood and this was before. And now we're finally done! Here's another look at the before! And here is the after.